Hey guys, thanks for joining Learn to Play. My name is Lance, and for my first video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Viceroy by Mayday Games. So, with Viceroy, you're, it's a one to four player game. It takes around 45 minutes to an hour to play once you get the rules down. And you and your opponents, are your goal is to collect cards and build a powerful pyramid that will gain you the most victory points. So I'm going to break this into two videos. The first one will cover the game itself, and the second one will cover the end game and the scoring. That way then in the future, if you only need to have the scoring and the end game explained, you'll be able to jump right to that video. So let's go ahead and head to the table and I'll teach you how to play. All right, so the first thing we're gonna cover is the setup of Viceroy. So each player will take one of the screens from the pile and set up in front of them. And also for first time players or players that are not totally familiar with the game, on the back of each screen covers the different rewards that are listed on the cards, so I would definitely recommend going over that because I won't cover that in this video since this the screens lay this out really nicely. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is make our reserve pile of gems. So for each player that's playing the game, you will take four gems of each color. And for this game, we're going to play it as if there was two players. So there will be 32 gems in the pile. From here, we will go ahead and take out two gems of each color and give them to each player. Once the players have them, they will choose six at random and put two back. The others will go behind their screens. All right, so as far as the board setup, I am using a couple things from the Kickstarter. As you notice, the gems uh, in the base game will be tokens, uh, works the same way, um, and then you won't have the mat. Uh, if you do have a chance to pick it up though, I would definitely recommend it. It does help with the flow of the game and just makes everything a lot more neat. So, in the base game, you'll get cards that represent these four auction colors. And from here, what you're going to do is take your character deck, shuffle it up, and deal out four cards to each player. Uh, from there, each player will look at the cards and decide to take one card and play, and it'll be the first card in their pyramid. Now, this card you don't, they won't have to pay for, and they will get the reward listed on the first level of the card. So, as you can see here, each card will have a part of a circle on the top and a half of the circle on the bottom of different colors or the same color. Cards will also have a number in the bottom left hand corner and on the side of the, each card will list the colors that people will have to pay in tokens based on the level that they put it in. And then next to each level will be the rewards that that player will get if that card is played in that level. So the first, the, what we're going to be looking at is the first level and so with this card, you would get three gems of your choice if you play that as your first card. Once players have made their selection, the remaining three cards, they will look at and pick one more of those to be in their hand. The last two cards will go back to the main deck. That deck will get shuffled again. And 48 cards will be counted out from that deck and placed in the large deck pile. The remaining cards will be placed in the small deck or draw pile. And then you will take the uh, law cards, shuffle those up, and deal out three of those to each player. The remaining cards will go in the law pile. And you will also want to put out some tokens. So we have uh, infinity and uh, single color uh, victory point tokens. We have scroll tokens, various victory point tokens, and you will have more than this. I just took out a small selection just to show you. You have uh, sword tokens, and on the back side of them, the shield. 
and you have scroll tokens and on the back of that is the science or gear as I refer to it as and then the last thing you want to do is put into easy reach the uh, gem reserve pile that players will take gems from so from here you're gonna go ahead and deal out your first four cards for the auction and you are ready to start playing the game so things to note during the game uh, you cannot move or remove cards from your pyramid unless the law card permits it uh, player pyramids cannot be over five levels but the length of them can be is unlimited so you can have them as long as you'd like all right so now we're gonna go over the auction phase so during the auction phase, the players will go ahead and look at the cards that are on the auction block. And as long as they have a gem that go, corresponds to the color of the card that they would like to go after, they can make a bid on that card. So from their uh, pile that they have behind their screen, they will select a gem. So let's say that the player would like to go after this particular card here. So he would take a blue gem from his behind his screen, place it in his fist, and put it out in front of him. When all players have done this, they would reveal the card that they're going after with the gem. If you were the only player that ha has revealed a color, then you would place the color in the reserve pile, and you would go ahead and take that card. If more than one player has revealed the same color, then you would deposit the gems in the reserve pile and no player would be able to take a card. All right, so this is the one exception to the rule that I stated earlier about when two players bid on the same color that they would put their gems back in the reserve and not receive a, a card. In the second turn and on, you will have potentially have cards that will come up to the second chance slots, as we see here. In a situation like this, when two players, and only two players, bid on, say for example, the red or the yellow, if they can agree on the card that they want, then they both can walk away with the, uh, the different cards. But they, the only way that that works is if they agree. So let's say, for example, the two players bid on the red section. If both players wanted this card and neither one of them were willing to take this card, then they would yet again lose their gems and go on to the next part of the auction. If they could agree on one of them taking the second chance card, then they would both walk away with a card and that would be the end of their auction phase. So the other option you have during the auction phase, if you don't have gemstones of a particular card that you're looking for or do not want any of the cards that are listed on the auction block, you may wish to pass. In order to pass, when players held out, hold out their hands with a gemstone, you would reveal during the reveal phase and have an empty hand. At that point, you would go ahead and take three gems of any color that you choose, plus you'll get an additional gem for every science token that you have currently on your pyramid. Now, for those players that, pass, or that did not pass, or for those players that have not received a card yet, we would go into the second auction part, uh, second phase of the auction, where players will be allowed to bid again for a card in the same way that we did before. Those players that passed or have already received a card may not participate in this round of the auction. If players by chance again reveal the same color gem, at this point they would do the same thing by placing the gems in the reserve and still not get a card. And in that situation, the players would go to the third round of the auction and the final round. If at this point the players do not receive a card due to bidding on the same card again, at the end of the round they are considered to have automatically passed and may choose three gems of their color uh, choosing. All right, so after all players have passed, received a card, or there have been three auctions, the round comes to an end. 
At the end of the round, if there are any cards remaining in the first chance, they will be moved up to above the arrow, and you will play four new cards below the arrows. Now, a thing to note, during the auction phase, a player can only receive up to one card, and players cannot go after cards if they don't have gems of the corresponding color behind their screen. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the development phase. The development phase can also consist of up to three rounds of building or adding to one's pyramid. So it, it, during this round, the players will select a card from their hand and place it face down if they wish to add a card to their pyramid. When all players have done this, the players will simultaneously reveal a card and list the number of that card in the bottom corner, and the player with the lowest card will go ahead and deploy theirs first. So players can deploy cards to the ref left or right of cards that are currently in play. So we could place this card here or here, now, our, it is important to note that cards will connect to make circles, and if you can make single colored circles, they will be worth more victory points in the end, but you do not have to. You can have multicolored circles, they just won't give you benefits. All right, so once the player has deployed their card, based on the level that, that they're building, they will pay the cost. So for us to play this card would cost one red gem, and then they may take the reward that's associated with that level. So in this case, we get three gems of our choosing. So we would take those now, and then the next player would go that has the lowest card. So during the next round of the, of the uh, development phase, if this player chooses to add another card, we would do the same thing. Upon revealing that card, this player has a choice now. He can play this card to the left or right, of cards that are already in play, or now that there's two cards on the first level, he may choose to play this card on the second level. Completing the circle. Now if he completes a circle of the same color, he would go ahead and add a gem of that color to his screen behind the screen pile of gems. Um, now he also has to pay the cost as he adds this of the second level, which would be a yellow and a red. Now, when it comes to claiming the rewards, he would only receive the reward on the second level. So, in this case, he would get a magic scroll added to this card. Now, you can only add cards to the second level once there are at least two cards supporting it. So, you would not be able to do this, for example. You have to have a card underneath it. Now, a pyramid can consist of up to five levels. And in order to build on the fifth level, so we'll say maybe that this is the fourth level, and to add this card to the fifth level, you would have to pay the four colors of the four levels below it and one additional of the fourth level. So, for example, with this card, you would have to pay two blue, one green, one yellow, and one red. Upon doing that, a reward for the fifth level is either 15 victory points or the first three levels of rewards. So for this one, you would gain a card, a magic scroll, and three gems of your choice. All right, so players may also wish to use their law cards during the development phase. Law cards work the same way as character cards do in that they have the circles as well that can line up. Uh, the differences are that law cards are free to play and they may play, be placed anywhere in your pyramid except for the fifth level or for uh, fifth tier and law cards will have different game effects some of them have bonuses at the end of the game some of them will have instant effects and some of them may even be played underneath character cards that will grant different effects or be played over character cards and if there's any tokens on the character cards, they will take the play, they will be placed on top of the law cards. 
All right, so the other options players have during the development phase is that they may pass, and if they choose to pass, they will not collect any gems during this phase for passing, and they will not be able to do anything else for the remainder of this development phase. Now, the other options players have is they may choose to discard a card and draw two gems from the reserve pile of their choosing. And that is the end of the development phase.